Hello, I'm Grandmaster Donato Nadizzi and welcome to my vlog. This is my very first vlog and I plan to release a vlog on a regular basis, perhaps once a month to start off with. Now, I hope you've been enjoying my videos and have subscribed to my channel. So far, I've released 11 Taekwondo tutorials and two Taekwondo lessons. With the Taekwondo lessons, I've started off with very basic techniques for beginners, such as white belts, and I'll be working my way up gradually to more advanced techniques. Now I plan to do other kinds of videos, for example training and workout videos where you can train and watch at the same time. I also plan to do Taekwondo science videos. Now I've got a degree in physics so I'll be using my knowledge to teach scientific principles such as sine wave, theory of power, equilibrium. And I also plan to do Taekwondo philosophy videos talking about the moral culture and the tenets of Taekwondo. This is something that I don't think has got much uh, media coverage at the moment. Now, with the Taekwondo lessons, uh, as you can see, they are more for practical use so that you can learn how to perform a technique and suggestions of how to practice a technique to develop it. With the Taekwondo tutorials, it's more theory based. This is to help the student learn theory, so perhaps maybe learning for a Taekwondo grading. Now, the information that I use for the videos, uh, I use the condensed Taekwondo encyclopedia as a reference. Uh, this is the 1999 fifth edition. As you can see, it's falling apart. It goes to show how much I use it. Now, this is written by General Che Yong Hee, the founder of Taekwondo. But sometimes the information is not explicitly written in the Taekwondo Encyclopedia, so I have to use my own interpretation or the interpretation of the grandmasters that I've trained with. But I always try to give you the most accurate information in my videos. Now, before we carry on, I'd just like to say a few thank yous to people that have given me gifts. Uh, after I passed my ninth degree grading, I received uh, a belt from Mighty Fist. This has my name embroidered on it, so thank you for this. But they also sent me a couple of dough box. Uh, this is the Matrix Master dough box. As you can see, it's got my name embroidered on it. And also the Onyx Master dough box. This is slightly thicker material, also with my name embroidered on it. They're both very good quality dough box, and these are the ones that I use when I'm filming my videos. So a big thank you to Jason, Bridget and Jonathan Morris from Mighty Fist. Now I've put the details of their website in the description below. Now also a big thank you to Miriam Patel for designing my great intro. Amazing how you created movement from that still picture. His details will appear in the description of all the videos where his intro appears in. Now I'm going to be doing a question and answer section in all my vlogs. Now as this is my first vlog, I don't really have that many questions to present you with today. But one thing that a lot of my students have been asking is why doesn't Alex appear in my recent videos? Well if you remember what happened in the blocking and attacking tools part 1, I literally smashed him to pieces. So I've been trying to put the pieces together ever since. I've almost finished, so he should be appearing very soon. I look so serious there, don't I? I do like doing puzzles though. Now I've got another question from one of my Facebook friends who wishes to remain anonymous. He asks, how many techniques or movements are there in ITF Taekwondo? Now I can answer that. I've got my condensed encyclopedia here, but if you give me a while. I'll just find out for you. One, two, three, four, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. This is going to take too long. It's a tricky question because it depends on the criteria you use. Take a punch, for example, it has many permutations. It could be done with a full fist, long fist, open fist, knuckle fist. It could be done in different ways as a front punch, side punch, side front punch, crescent punch, etc. It could be done with different stances. It could be done high, middle and low as an obverse, reverse technique. So this creates hundreds of permutations. Now in the Taekwondo Encyclopedia, it states that there are over 3,000 techniques in Taekwondo. Now I'm sure they work this out by looking at all the permutations in this way. But it's interesting to note that most of the techniques are hand techniques, not kicking techniques. This dispels the myth that Taekwondo is mainly made up of kicking techniques. 
Now one day I hope to make a database with all the permutations of the techniques, but if somebody's done this already, I'd like to hear from you. But for now, the answer to the question is just over 3,000 techniques in Taekwondo. Now, I've received another question from Mark Young, who's a friend of mine. We used to train together at Patni Taekwondo School. He asks, when breaking high section, is it Twimyo Dolyo Chagi or Twiggy Dolyo Chagi? I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in the Korean language, because I am an expert in the Korean language. No, not really. Just because I'm a grandmaster in Taekwondo doesn't mean I'm an expert in Korean. I do understand the Korean Taekwondo terminology, but uh, that doesn't mean I understand the rules of grammar of the Korean language. But I do know the answer to the question. It's Twimyo Dolyo Chagi. Now, Twimyo and Twiggy are basically the same word. Twimyo is conjugated differently. It depends how you use it in the sentence. It's very much like fly and flying. Part of the same word, conjugated differently. Another good example is the word dolgi, which means turn. So when you're describing a spot turn, you use gujari dolgi. But when you're describing turning kick, you use the word dolyo chagi. So the ending's different. So I hope this answers your question. Now, if any viewers have any other questions you'd like me to answer in the next vlog, please submit it by putting it in the comments below. Another section I plan to put on the vlogs is the Grandmaster Lifestyle section. This is to give you a behind the scenes look at my lifestyle as a grandmaster. So I'll be taking you to events such as seminars, competitions and gradings to see what goes on behind the scenes. Now for this video, I'm gonna show you a recent holiday I had in Venice. So it's not all Taekwondo work as a grandmaster. I think it's important to get the right balance between leisure and work. So I took my wife to Venice on Valentine's Day. <music> If you haven't been to Venice before, I strongly recommend it as a short holiday such as a weekend break. It's a very scenic and romantic place with lots of gondolas and opera. I was not only there for a romantic week, I was there on a mission to buy a Borsalino hat. Mission accomplished. We were lucky with the weather. It was sunny almost every day. It was in the middle of February, so it was carnival time, with plenty of masks and costumes. Why is this lady looking at me in this way? The cheeky lady. She said I was wearing an ugly mask. But I do look much better behind the mask. And here's the proof. I did manage to get a Taekwondo related photograph while I was there. Can you see the connection between this photo and Taekwondo? I was inspecting the knot to check that it was a cleat hitch knot. Because that's how they Taekwondo us to the cleat. Taekwondo, sorry, that was a bad pun. 
I should have warned you that I often give out bad puns. So from now on, I'll give you this bad pun warning because I know a lot of you don't find them very punny. I mean funny. Some of you don't see it as humor, more like a punishment. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop now. Now, before I go, here's a brain teaser for you. Which two techniques performed in exactly the same way with the same tool, but one's a block and another is an attack? So two techniques performed the same way with the same tool, one's a block, one's an attack. I'll give you the answer in the next vlog. So bye for now.